Hi guys, just one of those things, I was just parking myself in my bed, cuddling with the cat, taking my galaxy ball with me, thinking, oh, let's see if there is any messages in there. I thought, like, you know what, since I'm looking into it, I might as well record, because there's one video I haven't done yet, that obviously um, that's going to be added to the videos in February, and that is the Valentine's Day video for all signs, which is what you are watching now. <coughs> Normally, I'm not a big fan of doing these, um, you know, these videos for a special day and all that kind of stuff. But the other day, um, I was basically just um, looking at, um, you know, the the um, progression of the planets and stuff, and then I noticed that on the 15th of February, so that's the day after the overpriced <laughs> Valentine's Day, um, the, um, the Moon, our emotional core, is very, very close to Venus, which is the planet of love. So, if you're going out with your sweetheart or you're trying to manifest um, a significant other, you know, and you may feel under the weather on the 14th because you're just not one of those lucky ones, if that makes sense, then remember, change your attitude because things are on the up, especially because on the 15th, the moon, your emotions will find a way to let you know that you are worth all the love you can master and manifest. So the energy to uh, manifest love, feel love, make a relationship that you're in stronger, all that stuff is all happening on the 15th. So while this is the Valentine's Day, um, I will basically um, look into the energy of the 14th and the 15th, if that makes sense, see if I can get a bit of a progression going here. Uh, obviously, so that you get a better idea about what to do, how to plan for Valentine's Day. Um, and then I'm just waiting for the guides to sort of obviously help me with this. Anyway, enough talk. <laughs> um, let's have a look. So the first sign that we're looking at, obviously, is Aries. Let's have a look at Aries. Aries, in your energy here is a lot of change. So the main message here is um, to understand whether or not you are in a relationship is sort of secondary here in the energy of um, attracting love and um, making love work because you have a lot of change here. So what the guides are saying is, th that's what I'm getting is two things for Aries. Uh, number one is there's actually nothing here that looks even remotely negative or dark so what the guides are saying is you know keep your faith up um faith up things faith up <laughs> things can only get better things can only get better anyway um the other thing is is, is about the change because you have so many different directions that you could be going what i'm getting for aries is to not manifest or repeat the same pattern this is about reflecting what isn't working or what hasn't been working in my relationships and to make sure that you're not manifesting the same thing i'm getting this strongly for aries to understand you're the first sign in the zodiac wheel you are the doer you create your own reality what's the point in continuing old patterns okay so that is what I got for Aries. Now, um, next sign is Taurus. Let's have a look what we got for Taurus with regards to Valentine's Day, energy, love energy, Venus being near the moon on the 15th, all that kind of stuff. The energy I'm getting for Taurus <laughs> is decisively about family. Now, that is not uncommon for Taurus. But, you know, sounds a bit harsh. What I'm getting here is for, for you Taurians, family isn't everything either. What you deserve is that one significant other that loves you without all the baggage 
that comes with it. Sounds a bit weird. What I'm saying is because you have energy here that has to do with family. So if you are um, a person that is with someone who already has their children, if you are a person that is in a relationship where you made the children you have, or if you are in a relationship where you kind of think, you know, let's just get this to another level so we become our own unit. The point is, regardless of what you program, manifest, or how many other people there are who obviously need you, the relationship that I'm seeing for you here is to reflect and to manifest someone who loves you without the clutter. That's what you deserve. You need to understand you are a person, so to speak, in your own right, you know, warts and all, and whoever your partner is or is going to be should really love you for who you are in your entirety and not just because you are a successful man and you are a good father and all that kind of stuff. For Taurians, when it comes to your love life, if that makes sense, the message here is to claim is the wrong word, but to, to a certain extent it's not the wrong word. It's just, it's more like understanding that you deserve someone who doesn't love you because of your environment and what you have proven that you can do or sustain, if that makes sense, right? This is much more, you know, if none of the stuff we have here would be here, would you choose me? And if you wouldn't choose me, piss off, right? So that's what I'm getting for, for, for Taurus. Not quite sure how, how helpful this actually is, but uh, I only work here. <clears throat> Next sign is Gemini. Now you're watching the Valentine's Day reading for all signs. Now we're at Gemini. You're watching Thomas's Tower readings. Please like, subscribe and share. And if you like my work, you can now buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium Thomas. Speaking of which, I made myself a coffee before I sort of sat down and then decided to record this. Sometimes I have no idea how I end up with these awkward, in these awkward situations, right? Anyway, are you ready, Gemini? <laughs> Let's have a look at you. Wow. So, Gemini, when I look at the galaxy ball for you, I can see string theory, quantum physics. What I'm seeing is that everything you are is here and everything you want to be is already happening in another universe. What that means is you are multi-layered and in order for you to manifest the love that you deserve, you have to manifest it as if it is already happening. So should you be in a relationship? Your first question is, right, do I really want to grow old with that person that, that you're with, right? Is this the one to plan a life with? So before we even go further here, what they're asking you to understand is that you shouldn't, sounds horrible, <laughs> you shouldn't settle for less. You shouldn't think, oh, you know, well, you know, if I was younger, if I had this, if I had this, I'm not sure we would be together, if that makes sense, right? So it's just about understanding that ultimately, there seem to be a lot of thoughts about things that could be different, which is why the quantum universe and all these string theories, which means you in different timelines could be living a completely different life. Um, all they're saying is, uh, you know, your focus has to be your timeline, your life. But your life has to do with you understanding that in that timeline, unless you're already happy, within yourself it's going to be very hard to find true happiness right so have a look at yourself gemini and see you know is it the other person um that makes me happy that doesn't mean that you should be on your own and think like oh you know blah, blah. that's not what i'm getting what i'm getting is for you just to also understand that 
if there would be nobody around you and you would kind of go like, well, it's what it is, I'm still awesome, it is much easier than to manifest someone who wants you for you. Sounded a bit like Taurus, but that's the energy I'm getting here for Gemini. All right. Next star sign, Cancerians. <laughs> right. I have no idea where this comes from. I'm getting the sentence. I'm not sure if I like you today. <laughs> Um, and what, what that means is, for Cancerians, your, your attention span seems to be so short that it almost makes no sense making suggestions to you. Ask yourself, are you burning out? Are you at a point where you're not as flexible to manifest what you really want, to, to, to change that relationship so it works again, all that kind of stuff? It's all here. Um, ultimately, what I'm getting for Cancerians is that the only way you manifest love properly is by understanding. I'm getting this, this constellation where shall I go left, shall I go right? And you have problems hovering in the middle. So it feels like you're sitting, it's like, it's like a musical chair. But you, you don't quite know where you're going. So the point the guides are making is, if you don't know what you want, how can you manifest? right? And I'm not necessarily saying that all Cancerians don't know what they want. But there is this constantly um, giving up on people. And at the other, uh, at the, on the other side, is constantly um, doubting. You know, is this the right choice? Is this the right choice? And why am I not this? You know, so the point they're making with Cancerians, because obviously when the, when the sentence here comes, I don't know if I like you today, which comes from the guides. They're just saying is we find it difficult to to help you and to make sense of you, because whatever the universe sort of presents you, you seem to have doubt and that doesn't quite work. So stop the doubt, go for what you want, right? Warts and all. And just enjoy yourself. Okay, that is that. Let's go with Leo. Next sign. You ready, Leo? There's a, a bit of isolation in the energy of your galaxy ball here. What that means is for Leo's when it comes to manifesting love, when it comes to looking at the love you already have for someone, they're asking you to step back a little and assess, seems to be the overall theme here, and assess where you really are in the scheme of things. Because the energy here is actually really, really positive for Leo. Um, and it may have to do with the fact that the, the full moon on the 5th, just 10 days, 9 days before, the Valentine thing, um, the full moon set in Leo, which means you have an energy boost at the beginning of the month. And so therefore your energy is still quite quite powerful when it comes to uh, just a week later, the, the, the Valentine thing. The point is there's, there's a lot of love here. So your issue may not be to manifest love, but to step back before it happens and just see like, you know, if I could choose whoever I want, if nothing else would be a problem, you know, finances, where I live, what I want to do, if I had everything and then that significant other is there, right? Would I prioritize her? What does the guides are saying to you because you have the Leo here. Um, there is a part of you that needs to be prioritized. And that needs to prioritize your significant other. There seems to be quite a lot going on in Leo life, right? And um, maybe you're not looking at the relationship you could have or have often enough to make changes to make it work. This is my cut. Put something else in place. And then I realized I'm not having anything to put in there. So there won't be a cut. In any case, Leo, let's go with the next star sign now. We're looking at Virgo. You are watching. 
the Valentine's Day special video, if that makes sense, for, for this month. Um, and now we're looking at um, Virgo. Sorry. Yeah. Virgo. Your energy is all about growth and growing. And what I'm getting is that when it comes to your love life, whether or not it is already happening or it is in the process of manifesting, there is a lot of growth. You just need to understand here that the only way your relationships work is by, by being proactive. So what I'm seeing here is, is projecting where are we going here? What is it we wanted to do? Did we make promises to each other, to one another? And why are we not getting there? <coughs> Conversely, if you are manifesting a relationship, don't get someone who doesn't have any drive. right? And if you are a person that at the moment doesn't have drive, right? then now is the time to, 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 to get up. You know, get off your bum, do something, higher metabolism, because what you need to make your love life really work and shine is, if at all possible, is to be out there, right? And if you have a condition that doesn't allow you to be out there, how can you bring the outside world in? So let's just say you have a condition that doesn't allow you to leave the house very often, um, right? Can you, can you order food? Um, and prepare the table as if you would dine with, with, with the celebrity of your choice. It is about you celebrating yourself and projecting a much better future in order to manifest it with or without the partner you may or may not have, if that makes sense, right? And I don't mean without the partner, what I'm saying is if you're not in a relationship, <laughs> right you manifest it and with you if you are with a partner same thing if you are proactive in that relationship and you say okay, that's what i really that's what i really want here in our relationship um the the partner will likely just follow and um so what you need to do and what you need to have is some sort of a vision and that's what i'm getting for virgo okay that was virgo We're looking into uh, libra now next star sign is libra it's quite interesting because normally, at least lately, I've been recording individual readings. And um, so they all flow differently. So going from, from sign to sign and seeing how the energy changes here, uh, somehow um, I find that quite heavy uh, today. So <laughs> here we go. Anyway, we are with Libra. Now, Libra, remember I say that in all the videos. <laughs> You are the seventh sign, we are in the seventh year. Therefore, your energy is already higher than the energy of any other sign because you just happen to be uh, um, that, that, that sign that is supported by the energy of the entire year, which is also the energy of alignment. And so when we look at your, your, your love life here, um, there is a lot of... Okay, how, do, how can I phrase this back? We call it Durststrecke in, in German, which means there's a desert here and you have problems getting through and there is a lot of nothingness and the air is dry and you have to get through the desert to get to that oasis to get the water. With regards to your love life right now, Libra, whether or not you are in a relationship or not, they're asking you to understand is it stale? Is it difficult to breathe in that environment? And to understand that I'm not seeing making massive changes. I'm seeing saying to the other person, help me get through this because you're partly the reason why I feel that way. So the energy that I'm getting, and again, this is, this is a general reading. It might not uh, resonate with all of you. What I'm getting is, is to hold people accountable for their actions and at the same time I'm not getting anyone forsaking anyone if that makes sense but there's certainly some struggle here um, that you're going through so if you are in the process of manifesting new love just be aware that there's stuff from other relationships or from old relationships 
that still sits inside you. Um, equally, if you are in a relationship, just focus on, you know, has, has someone messed up in that relationship? Have we now become a couple that just lives side by side? That's the energy that I'm getting. Um, and just reflect and then be honest about it so things can flow again when they're, uh, um, when they're talked about. Okay, that was Libra going to the next star sign, which is Scorpio. Here we go. You ready, Scorpio? <laughs> so the the imagery that I'm getting is a bit of a weird one, and it isn't. So the what what I've been shown is a hi hat, you know, from the drum, a hi hat, and a um. um There's a glass, there's a drink, the drink that you have on New Year's Eve. Just can't think of the bloody name, right? Anyway, so there's a, there's a, a celebration and you have that very expensive fizzy shit in that glass. So the point is, um, the hi-hat is, is about understanding, you know, you play that, 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 that note and then you, you, you alter it by opening the hi-hat. Um, the pitch changes. So, so in order for you to understand how to have a lot of very positive experiences in your life, it's about releasing at this point in time and understanding that when you are releasing, it should be rhythmical. Sounds very weird. So the imagery here for Scorpio is quite weird. So the point is you have this massive fight or flight response to everything. And all the guides are saying is... Um, it's because sometimes you wait too long before you say something and then you, you rip someone's head off. <laughs> so there is another element here ele element here for you to understand that unless you are somehow balanced within yourself, everything is going to be difficult to achieve when it comes to love life. But because you already have that Prosecco thing or whatever it's called, you know, just can't think of the term, doesn't come to me. Um, you know, champagne. Champagne. That was the word. That's what that's what in this that's what is in this glass. Champagne. And so there's champagne, and then there is this. So, so the point is there's already celebra celebrations coming your way. So therefore you will be able to celebrate uh, love and 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 also to manifest it. But something needs to shift first. And if you shift it. It has to be even, if that makes sense. So don't lose your cool, right? Just state what you like and what you don't like and celebrate what you have and what you would like to achieve. Okay? I'm sorry that took me so long to get this out. It is what it is. Okay, Scorpio. Moving on to the next star sign, Sagittarius. Okay, Sagis, here we go. Okay, for Sagittarius, what I'm getting is, is for you to, sounds a bit horrible, let me just get another sip. In order for your love life to improve, what I'm getting is, for Sagittarians, is to look elsewhere. Now, I'm not here to break you up with anybody. But what that means is when they're saying is look elsewhere. Are you stuck in the relationship you're in? Are you still going out together as if you are 15 years old and really just enjoy the moment out there? What I'm getting is that that you're, you're, you're dreading water and you're just not going anywhere really. And remember, you are the archer and the archer has the bow and arrow. So you decide how much energy you actually give the your 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 love life if that makes sense you know right demol say hello hello if you could talk i wonder what sort of pitch your voice would be hello right. anyway so what i'm getting for sagittarians is to understand there is an element of not quite doing something with your love life and uh when I mean, they're saying is go elsewhere it's like you know 
shifting stuff and maybe maybe have an adventure together that you that you wouldn't necessarily go on uh, equally um, if you are manifesting love um, maybe you want to look into areas that you haven't been looking at i'm getting something really weird here and i'm not again you know this is just imagery and it doesn't mean it has to be that way but what they're showing me is someone again it's it's, it's obviously symbolism it has always stated women that live in the same road and they sort of all look the same <laughs> sounds horrible but the, the image that i'm getting is that 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 you you seem to follow patterns you have a you seem to have preferences now while while it's very normal to have preferences what they're saying is maybe you shouldn't focus on that preference that you have right um so that's what i'm getting is you know um open up a little you know uh allow people that you probably wouldn't necessarily connect to to also um you know be be there in that in that consideration of a relationship right so again that's a bit of an odd one isn't it not quite sure um it feels a bit Sagittarius, it feels a bit um, stale and it feels a bit not sure what to do here. Uh, but the point is in it all is that a part of you sort of follows the same patterns, plays it safe. And that is probably why you're not manifesting anything really exciting anymore. And conversely, if you are in a relationship where you feel like, well, it's really, really nice. I really love you, but we're not really experiencing anything anymore. That's what you need to change. And like I said, since this is now um, a video for all signs, uh, signs, signs, S I G N S, um, you you want you may have noticed already that there is some sort of a of an overall energy here already about things not quite flowing, right? So again, on the fifteenth, then the day after uh, the Valentine's Day, um, the Moon and Venus are super close. So anything you want to do with, with love, anything you want to express with love, the 15th is the day, not the 14th. Okay, that was Sagittarians. So we have Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces left. So shall we look at Capricorns? Right. Okay, here we go. Again, Capricorn, there is a bit of a void here. For Capricorns, the, the energy here is, is about, again, there's it, it a lot of overlapping energy here with, with, with signs. And the energy for Capricorn is, do you allow compliments to really be noticed? What I'm getting for Capricorns is that sometimes even when someone says something nice or means well, you might not quite take it or doubt it. What I'm getting for Capricorn with regards to anything to do with love, reflect on how come I have stopped taking compliments, how come I think some people have an agenda. So focus on your experiences when it comes to uh, um, partners and your love life. And, and don't just assume that anybody is a bloody liar or has an agenda, right? So what I'm getting for Capricorn is, is to allow yourself to be much more open um, to people's affection and to people's uh, um, loving words. And equally, if anybody doesn't have uh, any loving words, ask them, how come you haven't got anything nice to say? Hold them accountable. Okay, that was Capricorn, Aquarius, our second last star sign. <clears throat> you are watching the Valentine's Day special uh, video with myself, Thomas Yanak. You're watching Thomas' Tower readings. Please like, subscribe, and share. Obviously, it will be timestamped. Yeah, all the videos are always timestamped when, when, I, when, I, when I read for all signs. Aquarius. Um, the energy here is there is an entire constellation in your energy. At this point in time, Aquarius and Aquarians, don't feel that the relationship you're in has got to be the relationship. 
there's always something else coming your way if that makes sense so you do not need at all to feel responsible for someone stuck with someone and also when it then when there's a full constellation when it comes to to those aquarians that aren't with anybody is you know sounds a bit sounds a bit weird maybe it is maybe it isn't take your pick right take your pick trust your intuition because your intuition is bang on um and that's sort of all i get for aquarius how weird is that short and sweet in any case <laughs> let's look at the final star sign which is pisces my star sign here we go now that is interesting <laughs> what i'm seeing here literally pisceans is pluto pluto is the outermost planet if that makes sense um in our solar system i know it ha uh, pluto has been uh, um, demoted to a dwarf planet uh, in 2006 but pluto doesn't give a shit right as far as i'm concerned just because in astrology he's not really counted pluto is still important because pluto is is, is found in any in any birth chart and therefore has its place and that is the first message just because you sometimes feel on the fringes of things and you may feel no matter where i go i'm always the odd one out i never really feel uh, fully embraced right if that is your feeling you're still in the game and what i'm getting is because pluto's orbit is so erratic that you have to focus as a piscean which i am too really important is do i sometimes convince myself that things aren't working and therefore manifest that things aren't working what i'm getting is regards to love is a bit of a self-removal from opportunities out of fear that there could be rejection and all this sort of thing so pisces you are the sign of dreamers and because you are a deep sign there's no way you can anticipate what you manifest if that makes sense you can only manifest as best you can and because you have pluto as the lone planet um, and pluto has a bit of an erratic orbit and it takes him 200 it takes pluto 248 years to orbit the sun number one um don't rush anything right should you be single at the moment that is not a reflection on anything just because you're single uh, um the same way millions of people are on the planet does not mean you're not you don't deserve love and you're not lovable right um so what i'm getting for for us pisceans is to stop thinking about why things aren't working and and also convincing yourself i don't really need anything i don't need anyone that doesn't help either what i'm getting for us pisceans and i say us because obviously i'm a piscean is to override the fact that pluto is the outermost planet because pluto since he has been demoted and now we see him as um so so let's just say we have these we have these planets right in our solar system and they're lined up and then pluto as the outer world planet has been counted now that pluto is no longer counted we put him back with the dwarf planets that are right where he lives anyway which is in the kuiper belt but in the kuiper belt he is still the, the the largest planet in the kuiper belt and all these other dwarf planets are saying to him hey pluto you're all right welcome home in other words with regards to love pisceans whatever you have experienced good and bad is just one of many things you are going to experience and what i'm getting for us pisceans here is to say like i deserve to have a new relationship a new love life and i don't care what people think of me i will always find someone who loves me which is the dwarf planets and the nine planets in the solar system that makes sense right so pluto is never alone so you don't have to be a reason to believe that nobody is out there for you conversely if you are in a relationship 
you know, reflect in the relationship. Do I feel I'm on my own here? What's going on? Right. And that's all I got, dear friends. Um, like I said, I had no plans of recording this. I just had a plan to sort of sit here with the cat, um, taking the galaxy ball, see if there's any messages for me. And then I felt like, you know what? Let's do the entire Valentine's Day thingy bob, which I now have, right? See you all very soon. Bye-bye.